what's up beautiful people listen to Arima. welcome to the channel today we're going to be checking this video from dating right and it's titled jada peterson dismantles feminism in front of two feminists Woo! interesting i'm excited to check this one out to hear what dating right i've got to say on here let's check it out One of our guests of the day, the other one today, is a man you may recognise or maybe you don't. Jordan Peterson has achieved that rare feat, becoming a global superstar academic. So how did he become so well known? He first came to national prominence in Canada in 2016 in a debate about new laws on gender identity. Bill C-16 made it an offence to refuse to call someone by their chosen gender pronoun. Jordan Peterson argued that this would infringe free speech while some supporters of the bill said he was advocating prejudice. From there, his YouTube star took off, and he has now over one million subscribers. And his videos, where he talks everything from identity politics, which we've touched on, to the Bible, to Disney movies, have been viewed over 150 million times. Gosh, that's about the same number of viewers we have on this programme. Huh. Last year, he supported ex-Google employee James Damore, who had been fired for suggesting men and women have different interests due to biological differences. And his latest book, 12 Rules for Life has taken him on a global tour promoting his ideas and just this week he sold out the 1,000-seater Emmanuel Centre around the corner here in Westminster. Um, so Jordan, you've done endless interviews, you've been publicising yeah. your book and they've generated plenty of heated debate. And I actually sold out the Apollo, it had 5,000 seats. All right, stop boasting. <laughs> um, do you think though, because of the heat that has been generated, that your views have been misrepresented at times? Oh, definitely, but that's, you know, that's part and parcel of the process. Mm -hmm. I did take a very um, uh, forceful stance, let's say, against some of the excesses of the radical left-wingers, and it's in their best interest to paint me as uh, somehow a figure of the extreme right, because then I don't have to be contended with. But, I mean, it's easy for people's views to be oversimplified in a very large public debate. I mean, in terms of some of the issues, I mean, you say you've been uh, painted as, a, as a, an extreme right winger. No, or, some people or, have tried yeah. that. Not very successfully, but they've tried it. And you came to prominence um, in part over your opposition to this law that we just talked about yeah. in Canada, proposing the use of preferred pronouns for transgender people. Mm. Just for clarity. Mandating them. Yeah. Right. That Saying that you issue. should do it. No, but, that you had to do it. Uh, right, you had to do it by right. law. But just for clarity, do you think a trans woman is a real woman? I don't really like the way those questions are formulated. You know, I don't know what that means. What do you mean a real woman? Exactly. Well, I'm Doesn't asking you, in your mind, you know, it depends what you think a real woman is, but do you think a trans woman is a woman? No. Oh, exactly. Why not? Because I think that women are capable, generally speaking, of having babies and they have mm -hmm. female genitalia and they have an XX chromosome and, and I think the biological markers are relevant doesn't necessarily mean that I don't think that people should be treated with respect and dignity if they happen not to fit easily into a gender category. That's a different issue. Right. But, but it's a matter of definition. And, and I actually think it's a foolish argument in some sense. Because what do you mean by real? Well, exactly. I mean, you've just clarified that. That's why Jordan Peterson is so popular. And we just love the fact that he's saying exactly what most of us are thinking. Us as exactly. men can see what's happening in the world around us. Of course, a woman is a woman. A female is a female. A girl is a girl. There is mm -hmm. only two type of human species, male or female. You've just clarified that, though. You, you, you don't think um, that a trans woman is a woman. And do you, do you think that that is what is behind or explains your opposition? to this idea of a law mandating you to use a no. preferred pronoun is because you don't actually believe that that's the truth, that a trans woman is a woman and therefore you can't use that pronoun. No, that's not my argument at really? all. Really? Yeah, really. My yeah, argument uh, is that the no, government I know what your shouldn't compel is. voluntary speech. No, but I know what your argument is. And no, you've but made that's it very really clearly. It. But no, but behind, that's exactly it. There's but the no motivation behind, behind no motivation it. There's motivation behind it. But you don't believe a trans woman is a woman. I wouldn't put everything on my li online in my life to take the stance I did, unless I had thought that through very deeply. And I've thought it through very deeply. There aren't hidden motivations that have to do with some arbitrary prejudice against trans people. Okay. It's purely, pure and simply this. There's never been a time in English common law history where the government compelled speech, and the Canadian mm. government dared to do that. 
and that was unacceptable. And they masked it with this show of, of compassion for the oppressed, and I don't buy it. Right, but you would, as I think you said, at an individual level, mm. if somebody Wouldn't asked have. you, if, you know, somebody asked you to use a particular pronoun, you would do mm. so. Well, I have. You have? Yes. Right, fine. Yes. Let's talk about feminism. Are you a feminist? Uh, no, not as it's currently defined, certainly not. No, uh, well, in any other definition? Well, I think that anybody who doesn't think that the, the competitive landscape should be opened up for equality of opportunity is not thinking. And so everyone's interests are better served if people have as equal access to opportunity to display their talents and to manifest their talents in the world as possible. So in that sense, certainly. But feminism now, it's as far, and this is why it's so deeply unpopular, a very small minority of women in the UK identify as feminists. And the reason for that is it's primarily become an ideological weapon. And it's an ideology that I don't, I, I detest actually, the ideology that it's associated with, collectivist ideology. Right, I mean, it, okay, and that's your view about feminism. Man, this is getting old watching Jordan Peterson destroy all these feminists during these debates. It's really like watching a grown person try to explain astronomy to a couple of six-year-old kids. Listen, Aisha, are you a feminist? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Imagine if a trans woman is a real woman. Was there anything like fake woman in the first place before? <sighs> Adults. Asking questions, even a picking, a child, know these things. Picking where they just born, self sabi this thing. Which one is trans woman, real woman? God created Adam and Eve, male and female, man and woman. <coughs> Nothing in between, no confusion. Eh? Which one is that one? That's why is the, the um, individual is a trans. Therefore, something is in between. Something is in between. You were once something before, but you trans. But which one is do you feel like? Of course, if people say, okay, they want to be called by a certain pronoun, nobody have an issue with this. But it's the fact that people is not being forced upon. Before now, nobody was confused. People were fine moving on with their lives. But the fact that just some particular group of people just want their voice to be heard, to be the loudest in the room. It's what nobody is, uh, nobody gets what people are trying to understand. Feminists, of course, that is their mindset. Poison. Feminists, modern day feminists, they are poison to the society. But it's a, it's a good thing we'll have people like you know, Dr. Jordan Peterson because now he fits these people. And we love that he is crushing it. Because I don't even understand how we've got adult anyway, feminists, they don't think now because they are poisonous to the society and to women because that is their end game, to trash men, um, turn men to be weak so they can control the entire world, control the narrative for trans men, trans woman, real woman. Is there anything like real woman or was there any fake woman in the first place before? Let's continue. Aisha, are you a feminist? Oh, absolutely. I'm a very proud uh, feminist. Course. And when I was um, mm. a special advisor in government, I worked on women and equality issues. And I'm very proud, actually, of a piece of legislation I got on the statute book with my former boss, Harriet Harman, the Equality Act uh, in 2010, which strengthened our anti-discrimination um, laws. And I fought very hard to get more women into public life, into the Labour Party. And yeah, and uh, yeah, I'm very, very proud of being a feminist, hence my pink oh, dress. Oh, uh, well, all right. Um, <laughs> obviously so. reverting to type then Absolutely. in the pink dress. Absolutely, well. Um, you would like men to regain or reclaim their strength physically, mentally and morally. Is that broadly correct? I would say morally, fundamentally, but I think the other things go along with that. Right. And, and if that but it is... isn't men precisely who I'm, who I'm speaking to, it's, it's people. I'm a clinical mm -hmm. psychologist. I'm actually interested in individuals and I'm interested in their fortification against tragedy. You know, every time I do an interview, the interview is always political. It's always political. Well, the, clue, the clue is in the title of this program. We are the Daily <laughs> oh, Politics. Oh, no, no, fair enough. No, no, look, fair enough, fair enough. And I'm, I'm not casting aspersions <laughs> at this program, but the fundamental news that's important about what I'm doing isn't the political element. And the people who but talk what? to me don't talk politically. They well, say they've watched but, but my lectures. But part and of that it is, sorry, is that I think for a lot of people, the kind of personal does become the, the 
the, the, the political. Or well, the political becomes the personal. Yeah, and I think in terms of the... Yeah, but the, in the, this I, situation, a lot of people are wrong because primarily what's happening is people are watching my lectures and as a consequence, their lives are improving dramatically. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure they are. I'm sure people are like, I've had a huge conversion after it's and they're much conversion. happier once they've been... It's not a been. conversion. But it's, what, it's what I would like to do is... is cut Won't they just quit interrupting this man before he make another good point? And see, that's what these feminists do. They interrupt exactly. anyone who is about to dominate them with answers mm -hmm. and facts. They've almost, I think at the moment, the discussion about feminism is very d d divisive and it, sometimes it can sort of be like, okay, men have to lose and women have to gain. Actually, mm -hmm. everybody has a lot to gain mm. by greater equality. Now, whether you really? get the equality of mm. outcome that you want, I think only time will tell. But certainly, equality of opportunity is, is very important. And actually, no, a, lot, and a lot of men would, would benefit from that. So I think a lot of it, men, men slowly. are having a lot of crises at the moment in terms of mental, mental health, mm. suicide issues, um, their own sense of identity, because I think some of the stereotypes put on men are quite limiting for them as well. I think they make men quite unhappy as well. The so devil's in the details with regards to equality because I'm a, an advocate of equality of opportunity. But and I outcomes. Think the idea, outcomes. That's an appalling doctrine. Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, because well, you have to produce an unbelievably potent bureauc bureaucracy to make the ever greater and ever finer distinctions that are necessary to enforce equality of outcome. How many group differences are you going to equalize across? Mm -hmm. Is it just gender and sex? How many genders? No, so gender and ethnicity? How many genders? I think How many what, ethnicities? What are... How many races? <laughs> about that specifically. I've spoken about the... You spoke the... about the right stuff yesterday. I... You talked about the Well, I've spoken about the fact that, you see, one of the things that's happened in the analysis of the differences between men and women is that the social constructionist claim is that mm. the differences are socially constructed, mm. right? Is that it's a consequence of environment that men and women differ. But what the scientific literature indicates is that as cultures become more egalitarian, like they have in Scandinavia, the differences between men and women actually increase rather than decreasing, which is a direct repost to the social constructionist view. So they just deny all that. The biggest differences in the world in interest and temperament are between Scandinavian men and women. It's exactly the opposite of what everyone well, predicted. Can I just pick up on one thing you said a little earlier in the interview, yeah. which you said it's the moral guidance that you are, are, are focused on, you think that yeah. is particularly important. How do you square that with the behaviour of perhaps arguably, you know, a prominent alpha male president of the United States, Donald Trump, um, when his behaviour, I mean, he is accused of having an affair with a porn star when his wife was pregnant. How does that fit with morally reclaiming? Um, well, you know, I would the say that was rather clearly immoral. Right. Yeah, but and, and you not, would still, not to be a target for emulation. But you still would have voted pursue. for him over well, Hillary Clinton fair, was, as, as fair, an identity though, politics. It, the, I mean, it's just how, how do that you was on the table. table. And I said I might have voted for him on a whim. That's but all. you also said so you started so. out feeling quite close to Hillary Clinton. Can I just come yeah. on, on the Very quickly, because we've got to move on. Man, it is a shame that Jordan Peterson is the man that always got to deal with these feminist women. I know he's yes. paid well to do these interviews because I don't see how this man do it. It's truly one of my theories that stress involving speaking to non-intelligent women every night took a toll on the late Kevin Samuels' health. I'm pretty sure of that because there's no way you can have an intelligent conversation with people that's not intelligent and it don't scratch you out. But it looks like Jordan Peterson, he's such a experienced debater that hopefully he don't let the stress get to him that way. But that's all I got in this video. You guys drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think about Jordan Peterson calmly dismantling feminism right in front of these two feminists. Be sure to hit that subscribe button on your way out, like the video, I will see you in the next one. I've said it before, when these very fem feminists sit in the, on the table and they say they are fighting for equality, it's a lie, it's competition, men and women are gonna gain, who is to gain, it's a lie. There is no way when they fight for equality that men and women are gonna gain, it's gonna be mutual interest, that is not possible. These women know what they are fighting for, but is their mind poisonous people? They would always want to bring a certain narrative and twist it. That is who they are. But of course, it's only Do Dr. Jordan Peterson. He get their strength and he will finish them, teach them what they don't even need to know. Because I can't even imagine. Look at them. Of course, they are proud fe feminists. Of course, they are, they are proud feminists. Poison to the society. And it's a shame that we have these people 
coming out here in panel to discuss and then people would even listen to them it's just shameful and to also see that dr jordan peterson have to actually teach them because no equal 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 right equal outcome from where who get the equal right to get the equal outcome well i think they are doing an amazing job by raising strong independent women so where is the equal outcome how are they doing so far and uh, strong independent women that don't need a man how are they doing so far equal right abby mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. start from there feminists they are poisonous and people should be careful what they listen to them, especially from this modern day feminists but all the same, um, I love this. Dr. Jordan Peterson, always the man, definitely gonna crush this. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comment down below. I'm sure tons of people have interesting things to share, and I really love you to share that. You can share other useful information they think might be really helpful. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and all of that stuff. And until next time, see you in the next video.